Let's make a slab built mug. Step one, cut out templates. For my templates, I use these foam craft sheets and I just cut out my design. So the body of my mug is 11 inches by five inches. The bottom is 3.75 inches. And then this is what I use for the handle, which is eight inches by 0.75 inches. Step two, draw mug design. Now for my design, I just uh, drew a little snail comic and I just uh, draw it on printer paper and I make sure it's nine inches by four inches. That way it will have a border clearance all the way around it. Uh, it'll have enough room for the handle and enough space above and below it to fit on the mug when I actually go to carve it. Step three. Wedge clay. For this project, I am using three pounds of Laguna B Mix Cone 5 clay. Step four slam clay into a rectangle. By rotating clay on four sides, I slam it until it is about two inches longer than my mug template. Step five roll out clay to three eighths of an inch thickness. In this video, I'm using my slab roller. I place the clay in between two sheets of canvas. I set the slab roller height to be about the thickness of my clay slab. After each pass through the roller, I continually move the height down of the roller until I reach about the 3 eighths of an inch thickness. Then I'll go through it about three times just to make sure it's nice and even. Once the clay is at the correct thickness, I place a plank of sheetrock under the canvas sheets. I then remove the top layer of canvas. Step six, smooth both sides with a rib. I go over several times to get the canvas marks off the clay. Using another plank of sheetrock, I put that on top of the smoothed clay and then I flip both planks of sheetrock and then I will remove the bottom layer of canvas and then smooth the clay with a rib. Step seven, add texture. I use old lace and a printmaking brayer roller to create a nice textured surface. Step eight, cut out shapes. Using my templates and a knife tool, I cut out the shapes for my mug. With three pounds of clay, I'm able to make two mug sets. Step nine, form clay into shape. While clay is still moist, Remove excess clay and form mug body into a cylinder shape. Bend the handles into the shape that you want them and let them sit on their sides. Do not let the clay dry out, or when you try to do this step, the clay will crack and you'll have to start over. Step 10, finish shape of handle. I'd like to add a little shape to the ends of the handle. It just gives it some personality. Then I smooth the edges of the handle and place it back on its side to dry. Step 11, join seam of mug. First, cut one side of mug's edge to create a beveled edge. Then, score both sides of the edge and add slip. Now, join the seam together and smooth.
Roll out a thin coil and add to the inside seam of the mug. Cut off the excess clay from the coil. Using a wood smoothing tool, smooth down the coil into the seam of the mug and to the top lip seam as well. Next, smooth the whole rim so the lip doesn't have any sharp edges. Step 12, sign bottom of mug. I have a stamp, but you could also carve your initials. Step 13, join bottom of mug. Bevel the circle bottom with a knife tool as well as the bottom of your mug. Then score and slip the beveled edges on both the circle and the mug bottom. Join the bottom circle to the bottom of the mug and smooth out the outside seam. As a finishing touch, you could use the lace over the seams to make it more uniform looking. Now make another small coil and put it on the inside bottom seam of the mug and smooth it down with a wooden smoothing tool. Step 14, join handle to mug. First, line up the handle with the outside seam and mark the top and bottom lines. Using these lines, you will then score and slip the mug and the top and bottom of the mug handle where it will attach. Place the handle and press both inside and outside carefully, not to warp the mug shape. Smooth down the attached parts. Wipe off the edges of the attached parts with a paintbrush until smooth. Step 15. Trace design on mug. Using my printer paper design, I trace over clay with a dull pencil. I do this at an angle so I don't puncture the clay. I like using packaging foam as a rest for my clay so it doesn't mess up the soft clay as I draw on it. Step 16, carve design. Depending on the type of design, I use a variety of carving tools. With this mug, I used a ball tool, a diamond core carver, a scoopy tool, as well as a rubber smoother tool and a paintbrush. And I don't know if these are the technical words for these tools. <laughs> Step 17, underglaze. I like using underglaze on these slab mugs because they have a flat bottom with no foot and I like them to have some color. Underglaze does not melt or stick to my kiln shelf when I fire it. And also because of the design, I like the colors to really pop and you could achieve this with a really nice underglaze. Step 18, bisque fire. I fire to cone 04. Step 19, sand bisqueware. I do this with a 220 grit sandpaper to make sure I don't have any rough edges after the bisque fire and to make sure that my bottoms are nice and smooth. Step 20, wax bottom. After rinsing off any sandpaper debris, I wax the bottom with wax resist. Step 21, clear glaze. Once the wax resist has dried, I mix my clear glaze and then I dip my mug into it, cleaning off the waxed bottom of the mug. Step 22, glaze fire. I fire to cone five. Thank you for joining me on my journey. Make sure to subscribe. Also, check out my website hardshellslimysnail.com and see what goodies I have for sale. And if you happen to have $2 to spare, please stop by my Patreon page and become a part of the Hard Shell Slimy Snail Club. You might win some free stuff. 
All the links are listed below. Bye.